We've got this nice, chill Studio Ghibli music. Uh, this <laughs> this game is basically Studio Ghibli with Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and like kind of like this mixture of psychedelic and acid trip uh, going on. That's and um, uh, most of you have something somewhat akin to a Dungeons and Dragons character. Um, and they're going to be out of their element. So if you've ever watched Spirited Away and the little girl, every encounter she has, it's just like, what the hell am I supposed to do about this? My parents are pigs. This giant spider monster thing has a furnace and it's has little miniature things. What the heck am I supposed to do? And the entire game tonight is just encountering weird things like that. Like in a weird dream space and how do you survive and live, deal with that. Um, the, the system itself, you roll 2d6 and uh, you have your... Um, Joel, I'm gonna bring up your character sheet. Uh, you have okay. your uh, skill number. So you may have three stats. Uh, if you're trying to climb something, you know, uh, jump over something, you'd roll 2d6 and you want to get under 6. And then I noticed that you have pistolet fighting, right? So, like, if you're trying to do a trick shot with your pistolet or something, you could roll 2d6 and it says that you have, um, rank 2. So, your total is 8. So, you roll 2d6 and you want to get under an 8. So, um, that's how you do skill checks. That's the core of the game. As you might notice, that's really awful. Because that means, like, the odds are always against you, almost. Like, you're on the back part of the bell curve. Um, and some of you might have rolled a really low skill, uh, where it's very unlikely that you'll pass a skill. And that's because this is a NSR game. Which means that, really, I think it's more, it's better to think of those skills and rolling things and and stuff like that, the, your character sheet, think of it more like saving throws. Like something has already gone wrong. Like you don't want to be doing, uh, be in the realm of uh, skills and stuff. Um, you want to be engaging in the fiction of the world and trying to outwit it and outsmart it together. And that's how you, you succeed. Uh, if you fail on a skill check, I will probably every single time offer what's called a luck check. Test your luck. So I can activate it for Mungan McCarmag here. I'll test his luck uh, after he's failed a, a check and it says success. And so then you lower your luck score by one every time you... So you can refuse a luck, luck test but, uh, and you can say, no, I'm just going to take the consequences because that will keep going down. And so every time, you know, and you're less and less likely to succeed. And the luck is kind of the saving throw uh, that's going to be in the back end of everything. That's going to be, okay, that go that went poorly, make a, make a luck test if you want. You can always turn it down. Um, stamina is your hit points. Um, are, is everybody a spellcaster? No, not me. Okay. Uh, so what Dave said, Denise, is right to cast a spell. You use the stamina in the brackets next to the spell I sent you. It'll have a number. It'll say like one, two, or three. And that's how much stamina you have to spend to cast the spell. And then in addition to that, you also have to make a skill check um, and, and succeed. That, did I get that right, Dave? What we just said? Or is it yeah, you, uh, you spend the stamina to make the attempt. And then uh, let's check, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And do you decrease your stamina then once you use it? So, like, if I did a three stamina spell, for example, would my total stamina then go down? Yeah. Is that yeah. Used three? Yeah, so you'd use three, so you'd lower it, yeah. Okay. Uh, just, I'm just making sure I understood that. Yeah. Concept. But you can regain stamina if you uh, eat provisions or okay. if you rest. Yeah, you have like five things of food on you, and at any time you have a moment to stop and eat, you could do that and roll a d6 and add it to your stamina. You um, can't eat three provisions a day or something. Oh, really? Two of my skills I can't find on the skill list in the free instructions. Uh, which are the... and pistolet fighting. So pistolet fighting is your pistolet, which is a laser pistol. And then... 
exography is your understanding of the planes in the multiverse because you are an exographer, right? I think, yeah. So you are like an expert in the uh, viscous, sticky ether between the planes called the fl phlogiston. And so like um, traveling between worlds and being in weird situations, you're probably the one that's most, you understand it the most. Um, exography would be something like, this thing seemed to come from another plane, make an exography check, or could I use my exography check to understand what came from a portal or, you know, that sort of thing. It's like planes and portals and stuff like that. Uh, anyways, um, so the basic thing is rolling under your skill. The other thing is, if you're in combat, you will both roll. I'll roll as the bad guy. I'll roll 2d6 and you'll roll a 2d6. Uh, Joel, you have pistolet fighting, for example. So you could add, you could roll 2d6 and add 2 uh, to the target number. Uh, and you just want to beat the other guy. Uh, so then if I don't have anything, I just roll 2d6 for the enemy. Um, another thing, since you have a pistolet and you have ranged fighting, um, I won't go over all these specific things, but you can aim. And aiming means that when your turn comes up, you can forgo your turn and wait till it comes up again. And when it comes up again, you get advantage. You get the higher of two rolls. So you can choose to do that if you want. Um, let's see here. Stamina, healing. Um, yeah, three provisions per day. So really you got three chances to roll a d6 to get stamina back. Now, uh, I'm excited to show this. The initiative system. So, um, the initiative system works with uh, a number of tokens. So, for example, I have uh, Joel, uh, Denise, Dave, and Steve. Um, and the way it works is all, each of you have two of these uh, initiative tokens, okay? And so, every time we have combat, the enemy can never have more than what you have. Total. So, uh, let's say you fight 500 goblins. They can never have more than this many tokens added. Okay. And then what I'll do is I have my happy birthday bag and I take your tokens and I put it in there. And I shake it up and then I reach in and then I say, oh, this is the person going right now. You know. And so that's how initiative works in the game. You have one token that can work for a hireling, and that'll be all your hirelings. Uh, and then there's one token that says end, and that means that automatically, other than any effects that are about to go off, like a magic, like a spell or something like that, nothing else happens, and we take all the tokens back out of the bag and start over. Even if only you've drawn twice or once or whatever. Um, so that's initiative. And... Uh, Yeah, there's some specifics about things like crits and, um, you know, you can do what you would ma imagine is, is reasonable. I prefer not to go into specifics. This is not a tactical game. This is, uh, and, and tactics won't, you know, so how far you are, it's just in the narrative. You know, am I close enough? Yes. No, yeah, don't worry too much about that right now. Or like, uh, crits and, 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 and fumbles. We'll just see what happens when we get there. Does anybody have any questions? That's pretty much the rules of the game. No? Okay. Um, so, uh, you are all in the city of Troika. Uh, Troika is a nexus uh, among many different worlds in the multiverse. And you're all headed to a party and you all have a reservation at the Blancmange and Thistle Hotel. And um, you're headed to a party on the top floor. And you've just checked into the hotel. And um, uh, the, uh, they've, they've told you where your room is. It's also on the sixth floor, which is at the top of the hotel. And uh, you're about to 
enter and head to uh, head to your room. And um, when you enter the hotel, it is cast in gold and chrome everywhere. Uh, chandeliers, ironwork, uh, thick, colorful, mismatched carpets. And sometimes it's like hardwood and sometimes it goes into a carpet. And there are paintings from every kind of era and taste and art style. And there are all these deep, comfy chairs in the lounge everywhere as you pass by on your way to the elevator. And sitting in them are mandrill monkeys, uh, all dressed very well and uh, enjoying things to drink and to eat. And um, the whole place smells like brass polish and artificial cherry cleaner. And uh, we start at the elevator on your way to your room. Uh, so how do you all, who are you? Tell us about your characters. Um, my name is, my character is uh, Mungan Makarameg. Um, <clears throat> he's a 32 year old exographer um, and he's uh, extremely eccentric. He, um, has always been obsessed with exploring and he was kind of a little kid that like read about explorers, but then like when everyone else grew up and picked real jobs, uh, or found something to do like that, he just kept wanting to be an explorer. So, um, he studied that in school and, um, couldn't get a job as an exographer initially. Uh, and so he uh, just started working on ships traveling between systems. Uh, and as he did, you know, they began to notice that while he was definitely super weird and not very good at any of his actual jobs, uh, he did seem to have a knack for um, navigating those systems and was not seemingly phased by any of the strange and horrific things they came across. So. Um, that is Mungan McCarmick. Okay, um, uh, what about you, Denise? Um, you see a woman dressed in kind of blue-gray robes, kind of like what the image is. It's not the best image, but what I could find, um, in a short amount of time, but she has platinum colored hair like almost like a gray color but she's y relatively young like in her 30s um she does wear glasses um she's pretty quiet and reserved mainly because as a thaumaturge she wanders around all the time and you know doesn't really have a set place that she goes to she just wants to help people and uh so she's kind of not used to being around a lot of people at once um so she's kind of reserved but um, is willing to jump in in a heartbeat to help. Um, she is carrying her staff still, so it is pretty much just as big as her. It has some crystals on it. It has um, beads and um, rings and whatnot, so she always is making tons of noise, but that's just part of her being a thaumaturge. And, um, her name is um, Anfa the Grey. I guess that's just her in a nutshell. She uh, came from pretty much a long line of thaumaturges, so... How do you I know Mungan? Huh? How do you know Mungan? Um... I would assume that she's probably wandered into his, you know, path a couple of times as she's been nomadic and going around and helping others. All right. Um, Dave, uh, what about, uh, Gormidrius? Gormidrius is pretty simple. Uh, before you is a figure in, uh, faded black dusty robes, so faded that they've gone to gray. Uh, the hands that you can see emerging from the robes are... Very thin and spidery and pale. Um, in one hand, he's holding a old, yellowed, polished skull. 
Um, his hood is up, so you can't see any features within, just darkness. Um, and he smells of the grave. Um, he's Sim standing there silently. A simple man with a simple skull. How, do, how does he know uh, Anf Anfa? Anfa. He doesn't. Okay. He's you, in fact only walked up behind the two. Actually, that makes sense. I like the, that. The stench of the grave and looked back and saw this figure. All right. Well, we'll start right at the elevator then. Um, you are going to. What's interesting is you all share a suite. <laughs> but we're still going with it. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see here. What number is the suite they're doing now? Uh, it's a. Uh, let's see. Ah, and one of you is given the key. And I'm going to roll a d3 to find out who has the key. Um, and it's, uh, it's Grimedrios is given the key to the room. Um, they, they, uh, the, um, uh, the concierge says that it's going to be clear when you get to the sixth floor where your room is. Um, but that you should certainly take, uh, take part in the festivities of the, uh, Feast of the Chili Ark. And, uh, when he hands you the key, it's got a, a thing on it that is too big to fit on a wrist and too small to be a necklace for anyone. What room number is it for? It has no number. But he says it's on the sixth floor. Uh, from within the darkness of the hood, Gormedrius asks the uh, the clerk, "Does the entire floor belong to me?" I don't think you'll find that to be the case, sir. Hmm. But that could change. And Arthuria sure. and Mungan noticed that Gormedrios is behind them yet, or are they just waiting at the elevator? Yeah, like you're. So what's happening is you're checking in, and uh, he's like, "Your room's on the sixth floor." And instead of handing you the key, he hands it to the stranger, who's now with you. Oh. I don't believe we've had the pleasure. I'm not sure that it will be a pleasure. <laughs> Chipper a little fella, aren't you? Uh, my name's Mungan, Mungan McCattermeg. Gormedrius that sits there silently. Um, Anfa kind of just like fiddles with the hem of her robes a little bit, like... Um, well, um, I'm on for the gray. Um, it's nice to meet you. You see, uh, you see Mungan, like, saying, like, um, for, um, for, um, for, under his breath, like, he clearly knows her, but just cannot, can never, they've known each other for a while now, and for, cannot remember anyone's names. So you see him, like, trying to memorize her name, even though they've worked together multiple times. Um, for, um, for, um, for. Yeah, go ahead. Gormedrius holds up the skull. He says, These are the remains of Hydrax the Master. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you, Hydrax the Master. And she kind of curtsies a little bit. Where's the rest of him? This is all that is needed. Oh. Get a wee bit dramatic, aren't you, bud? All right, uh, is that the key you'll be having? You may have it. Ooh, Gormedrius cool. offers it over. Don't mind if I do. Uh, sixth floor, you said? Uh, yes, sir, and the elevator is just here to your right. All right, Anfa, uh, fella in the robes. Well, what'd you say the skull's name was? The Tarmax? Do not insult the name of Hydrax the Master. No, no, no I, <laughs> I swear, I, I, uh, it, well, I meant no offense. I, I kind of remember names myself. So, 
Uh, Hijax, you said, yeah. Uh, I'll remember that. I won't, but I'll try. Uh, sixth floor, let's go. Gormedrius looks to the clerk as they're leaving and says, Should anyone perish, inform me. Um, as you, uh, let's see, you approach the, uh, the elevator, uh, sets of elevators, um, uh, I should note there is an illuminated glass map of the hotel. Uh, it seems that the hotel has a sort of, uh, what do you call it? A, um, atrium design, uh, where, um, there are these kind of circular portions going up to multiple floors and, uh, you have the lift, and then you have uh, the emergency stairs uh, that are on the opposite side. And the whole structure of the hotel pretty much follows that. Uh, and then there is a basement um, that can also be accessed uh, through the elevator or the service par portion of the stairs. Um, and at the lift, um, there is the lift doors have a chrome color to them, and there are old, overly punched buttons uh, with just an up button and a down button. Uh, Mungan doesn't notice the buttons, so he just he thinks the doors are automatic. So he just happily parks himself right in front of the doors, and when nothing happens, he tries like waving the key, and then he tries like poking on the doors a little bit, thoroughly baffled, but also equally content. Uh, with these doors that do not appear to be working. Anfa would probably see the buttons and just start randomly pressing them. <laughs> okay. It's kind of right. like the little kid in the store that says, try me. Yeah, roll a, <laughs> roll a D2. Um, yeah, flip a coin there. Coin. See if it goes up or down. Not available on here. We're at D4 and divide by two. Yeah. Yeah. That'd probably be the best bet. <laughs> so I don't... <laughs> I rolled a one, so... A one, okay. So you press both buttons, and eventually... Um, ding! And the elevator, uh, it opens. And um, the uh, there's a tiny little mandrill monkey. Uh, in a tiny red suit, and he's oh. sitting next to the uh, <laughs> to the uh, to like the front right of, of where the elevator is, and there's a series of levers, and he's operating the the elevator, uh, and he has a little hat, um, and inside the lift is an ironwork cage. Um, it's very old fashioned, and a thick green carpet along the floor, and as you step in, it almost like you sink noticeably uh, with how soft it is. And there's a tiny little chandelier up above with phosphor bulbs. Um, is anyone especially tall? Just normal sized people. I mean, Mungan's probably 6'3". That's pretty tall. Oh, okay. You find that you have to like avoid the little chandelier as you come into the elevator because um, it's kind of... Uh, uh, not very big, the elevator space. Uh, and the, uh, the walls um, are painted in gradients of different colors. Uh, there are no floor numbers listed anywhere on any of the controls or any of the dials or any of the buttons. Uh, but uh, as you come in um, and into the elevator, uh, are you all entering the elevator? I guess I should ask. Hey, Steve. And there are two people in the elevator, and I'll describe them in a minute, but do you guys go in the elevator? There's also a little, um, um, no, she's not there yet, actually, but there is a person, and, uh, Steve, uh, you can describe your character, uh, because there is a person here on the elevator. Okay, so, uh, my character's name is, uh, D. Frio the Knives. Uh, he's a shaggy-looking fellow, uh, with a, uh, High cut, lots of scars. He's wearing uh, uh, some well kept leather armor over a uh, black uh, black cotton tunic. Um, strapped to his arm is a is a short sword. He has a short sword uh, on his shoulder, 
It has a long sword on uh, each side of, uh, or sorry, a long sword on his belt and two great swords on his back. Uh, he's got a bit of a, a twitch in the eye and he's, and he's looking around, um, trying to take in everything that's, that's going on. Um, Anfa, you know this person. Um, you know uh, Diffrey. Uh, he is a temple knight. And uh, she would probably brighten up vis- visibly at the fact that she sees someone she knows fairly well. And uh, she would be like, Diffrey! Oh my goodness, it's so nice to see you. Uh, what's your character's name? Oh, and uh, she is Anfa. Anfa. Anfa, what are you doing here? Well, I was invited to this party. And, um, Differ, you were also invited to this party. You were invited uh, as a temple knight to the Feast of the Chiliarc on the sixth floor of the top of the hotel. Well, I see you two were invited. I am very excited for a good dinner. And Differ, I am ready for it. You additionally see uh, a person in a really strange assortment of equipment and things, and uh, as well as a very um, uh, dark figure uh, in robes with a skull. The up, down. What I like that. And anyways, do you all go on to the elevator, or, or what do you do? Yes, Mungin walks in and waves at uh, the elevator. D free and but like it's nothing unusual and parks himself and gets ready to go up. All right. Well, D free notices that the figure in dark robes smells of the grave. <clears throat> um, and he holds up the skull and says, These are the remains of Hydrax the Master. I don't recommend you get the name incorrect. I call him the remains of a man who wasn't ready. And the door is his feelings get me. his feelings get real hard if you call him by the wrong name. The uh, the I've door closes. Had feelings in decades. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you notice as the little monkey like starts to pull some levers, like the elevator like starts to shutter and then like stall out, and it seems like it's going to stop and then starts to go and then stop, and then this thing is moving really, really slowly. Uh, but it's not going up. It's going down. Uh, because, um, because, uh, Anfa pressed the down button. Um, and so, um, yeah, you, uh, it opens. Well, you can't see Gormedrius' features in the hood. He's like looking around startled at this contraption. Hmm. Uh, he's trying to catch a glimpse, like as he's... <laughs> I don't look in. Oh. <laughs> Don't mean to be rude. <laughs> yeah. And uh, come down. It takes like a good minute or two, and eventually the doors open. And um, uh, there is a basement here. Um, and I'm going to stop the music. And I, the best I can do is describe what you hear here. Um, there are a um, uh, there's a bar uh, with a ton of um, uh, exotic pickled vegetables in jars that are for sale with various prices on them. And there's music being played here. It's kind of like a bar scene. Uh, and it sounds like um, uh, like echoing lions. Like, <laughs> like that. And then there's like um, someone also out of tune with that is also kind of like playing a tuba. Like... <laughs> Like, at the same time. I don't know, that probably didn't transmit. But that's kind of like the noise in here. And then there's these pickled vegetables, and there's a bar. And um, there's a barman who is not a monkey, uh, but a very old man. And, uh, yeah, that's what you see down here. The guests are preparing to leave. uh, Because uh, they have various... Today is the feast of the chili arc, of course. So, 
And they have to be on about that. And so we're trying to get up. We've gone down. Yeah. Now surrounded by pickled, pickled goods. Uh, I think this was my fault. I had just pressed buttons and they were buttons. And I think I pressed down. But, uh, is there any way we can go back up? Like, if I look around, or, like, we haven't left the elevator. Have yeah, we, you haven't left the elevator. The little monkey is still there, sitting by the controls, like, waiting, looking kind of kind of bored. Yeah. I'd probably try to kneel down and, like, talk to the monkey. What do you say? Is there any way we can go up? It nods, and then it starts, like, pulling levers and stuff. And, uh, and the door closes. And, uh, and then it starts to slowly start going back up again. And it takes like a good, uh, a good solid minute of going up, uh, until it, uh, until it gets to, uh, the first floor. And then the doors open again. And there is a, uh, an old lady, an old fat short lady, a short fat old lady. Uh, and she, she waddles onto the elevator, uh, wearing a blue shawl. And um, blue rinsed gray hair, and she gives a single red bonbon to the mandrill, who uh, excitedly scarfs it down and then <laughs> hiccups happily, and then like he gets back to work and starts moving the levers and stuff, and then it starts to slowly start going back up, and and uh, the elevator starts going up, and uh, she uh, she nods to all of you and stands there for a moment, and then she uh, she turns to uh, turns to Gormidrios and she says well what is your name my name is of no importance but these are the remains of Hydrax the master she takes spectacles out looks at Hydrax he's dead it, it mm, is yes. he who was invited yes it seems so hmm ah. don't don't get his name wrong he gets really hurt well, I'm sorry, he has no feelings. Uh, he doesn't like it. Yes. The master will punish us all, yes. Hydrax, uh, and she starts, she ignores you now and addresses Hydrax instead. Uh, are you here uh, for the Feast of the Chili Ark? I will have to work witchcraft for you to speak with him. Mm, of course. <laughs> all right. So I've got to use the, uh,. Gotta cast skeletal council. So I gotta spend three stamina, so it'll take me to sixteen out of my nineteen maximum. Um and then I just roll two D six I reckon. And I'm trying to get under uh five. Oh no. Oh no. Five uh, and uh, so it's not a double, oh, yeah. so I right. guess it's not an oops, but... Uh, yeah, okay. Um, um, does anything else fancy happen if I fail? Yeah, uh, so you can choose to make a... Uh, a um, you can attempt, if you wish, to make a, uh, a, luck, a luck check uh, to avoid any negative consequences, but your luck will go by, down by one whether you succeed or fail. And then how does uh how do I make my luck go up? Uh oh, uh it it happens between uh you get a certain amount of luck back, but but it won't happen this session. So this session you've got what luck you've got. Try it out for funsies here. So I guess that's just the test my luck button, right? Mm-hmm. Success. So now you'll lower it down one uh, to yeah. eleven. And um uh the only thing that happens then is the spell failed. So what does that look like? Like the, the is 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 he is he upset or like is he refused to speak? Uh, we'll say the figure in dark robes uh, turns so that the skull is like facing into the hood. Um, and it actually, um, Gormidrus just holds the skull in his pale spidery hand for a time. It's kind of awkward because it's just completely silent. And then uh, 
the hood turns to this old lady and he says, uh, Gormedria says, the master does not wish to speak at this time. Mm. How terribly rude. And she like takes her belongings and uh, turns away from you and looks up at, at Anfa and she's like, and you, will you be visiting the porcelain martyrium of St. Jude while you're in town? If there is time, I certainly wouldn't mind exploring and learning more. Is there not time, young lady, to uh, for the Red Church in its proper hours? I am uncertain of the itinerary for this party, so I'd rather know all the information first. But if should there be time, I certainly wouldn't mind visiting. And hopefully there will be. Is it a lovely place to see? Oh, yes. Hmm. And she, uh, she's like, offers you a bonbon. Oh, well, thank you. And, and your shawl is lovely, by the way. Oh, thank you. Hmm. And uh, your bonbon is green. What lovely color. And she, she just kind of holds it in her hand. <laughs> yeah, she turns to uh, Diffrey and she says... And, and, uh, have you brought any gods with you today? I have indeed brought my god with me. You have some gods with you? Yeah, I show her the, uh, the, 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 the blessing of, um... I gotta look at my inventory what this is called. Where are you? Ah, uh, the blessing of Talak. Talak. What's it look like? Um... I imagine a, uh, it's like a, a, a little sword, um, with, oh no, now I'm thinking of, uh, oh no. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a bit of a punt, but, uh, the, the Lady of Pain's head, but just a sword in the center. Yeah. And I have to hold it very carefully because it's very sharp. Oh, okay. She looks at it. Hmm. I'm not familiar with this one. It doesn't look like a god to me. Looks like oh, it might it poke is. you. Oh, and he will. Oh, well, I don't want to touch it then. No, no, you do not. And but she... he is ever vigilant and ever watchful for us all. Hmm. Doesn't sound very useful to me. And she offers you a bonbon if you want one. I accept the bonbon. Okay, your bonbon what? is... Blue. I take it, kind of look at it. I am very happy for this bonbon. All right. Do a, a big bow. Um, and then she turns to um, she she turns to uh, um, to Mungan, and she's like, and and where will you go when you die? Oh me, uh, I don't really know. I I I, I figure uh, I'll probably just turn into dust and become a star again eventually and then that star will explode and then that dust will turn back into another uh, one of me I guess just a big endless cycle yes that's probably true and she offers you a bonbon oh you want one yeah, oh, yeah of course All right. he takes um, the bonbon your bonbon is black Oh dang! Yeah, and like then uh, let's see the, uh, the elevators. This is how slow the elevators going up, by the way. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, the uh, it stops at another floor, and the elevator doors open. Holds out his hand to the old lady, Woo! and she like waddles off the elevator on the next floor. And um, there's a uh, uh, this I don't know. There's a, on this hotel floor, there's this huge thing of like, it looks like smoke at first, but then it sort of like, uh, shifts and then enters the elevator and you can see that there's like pieces of jewelry floating inside of it and it goes, and you can hear a voice and it goes, mm, excuse me. And then like the elevator doors close and you see the little man, tiny, man, um, man, um, 
the little monkey, the mandrill, take a gas mask out of a container nearby and put it on his little little tiny gas mask put it on his face. And all of a sudden the the elevator and it starts moving up. Um, the elevator is like full of this like fluid and uh, you realize you can't breathe. And, and it's like, and you hear a voice from it and goes, I'm so sorry. Is there a, a hatch in the ceiling? Uh, let's see. Yeah. No. This takes the monkey's gas mask away. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, are you? He's huffing it inside the hood. Yeah. Are you? Are you going to uh, like? Yeah, you're going to try to force it off of the. Let me. Let me find this little thing. Stats. It's gonna be it's gonna be a contested uh, check, so I will roll. So it'd be two d six, and then you can add any skill you have related to strength or that would would apply to that. I don't really have anything. It'd just be two d six. All right, I got a six. Uh huh. An eight. Uh, you pull the thing off of the the little the little monkey uh, and you and the little monkey starts to choke and starts to pull levers like just out of desperation um, and then uh, you realize that the elevator starts like stopping and going up and down and not making progress meanwhile uh, back with um, uh, but you have a gas mask that you can try to put over your face or nose probably just over your nose like that you know, so Diffrey, you were looking for a way out. Let's see here. Uh, no. There's, it seems like it's sealed, and there's no hatches. What's the uh, material of the, the walls? Is it uh, wood, glass, or...? Uh, it's uh, metal. Um, and it's in an iron cage, uh, and then surrounded by um, metal with, uh, with kind of fake paneling. I'm going to... Uh, oh, goodness. Uh... Everybody can attempt to make a hold breath check. Um, so you can that use... 2d6? Yeah, 2d6. Just straight up 2d6, or is there any modifiers? Or uh, like that if way? you have anything that could relate to holding your breath, let me know. But otherwise, yeah, it's just 2d6. And you have to roll seven. under your skill. Oh, I just rolled a 12. That's the no. Seven. Oh, no. Nine. You have to roll under our skill? Yeah. Oh, I did not. I rolled a seven and my skill is six. All right. Oh, I rolled a nine and my skill is six. All right. And then, and then, and then you, they you, died. you fumbled. Yeah. Okay. And so you guys can choose if you want to make a luck test if you want. Uh, but your luck goes down one each time you do it. Um, so I'm sorry. Question because my staff has the. Uh, I don't know. Is this the re-roll one die on the oops table? Oh yeah. So if you uh, if you end up in an oops condition, you can you can re-roll the die. I think which could okay. save your life. Also, do you guys have any magic that could maybe do something? I don't know. I think my special skill is you may test your luck just to just so happen to have it. Oh, never mind. That doesn't count. Okay, I'll test my luck. You could test your luck to see if you have something for this. But you have to try to figure out how you would use it. But, yeah. Um, I'm trying to see. I think fumbles apply just to, um, as far as I, I think they just apply to combat. Okay. So I think... Uh, I tested my luck and it said success. Okay. So... Yeah, just in combat. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Okay, so the, anyways, you succeeded on, on your luck test. Um, you're able to find a little pocket of air just for a minute. Uh, but uh, everyone else, except for our necromancer, oof, takes six points of damage to your stamina. And do the luck thing? Oh, do, uh, yeah, do the luck thing. Except, okay. yeah, 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 you can do the luck thing, see if you... Do I press oh, nice. uh, test luck? Uh, yeah, test luck. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, good, okay, so you guys are able to, like, gasp for air as this thing is slowly going up, and you notice... Uh, that the gas mask has been taken off the operator, and the operator is just like uh, hanging on, but otherwise not operating the the elevator, so it's not going up. And as he swings the the levers around, it it stops and shutters and goes up and goes down and stuff, and it's not making progress. Did we notice uh, Gourmetios take the mask, or was it? We weren't paying attention. Yeah, I mean, he's got a little tiny, uh, he's got a little monkey gas mask and he's using it to breathe. Can I smack him with my staff? I, uh, let me ask. Uh, let's see. It's Gormedrios. Can, can she hit your uh, character with a staff? Of course. Yes. <laughs> it, but it's like you're in this like fluid, so it like, dunk. You know, and oh. you're choking and trying to find air and stuff. Mental the, image of this is brilliant. I love what's, it. What's the plan? What are we going to do? I was just wanting to smack him because I saw him steal the gas mask from the monkey, and that's why we're doing like this little. Doo-doo. Yeah, the, and there's this obese gas monster yeah. who's like, I'm really sorry. I want to uh, nab the mask. Do a quick inhale and <laughs> give it back to the monkey, <laughs> but hold it. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is, do a quick inhale, give it to the monkey, give it to, give it to everybody, keep giving it to the monkey. <laughs> um, can do can what, like contested skill. Uh, yeah, if you if you don't well if you don't want him to get the mask, um, then you just have the mask. Uh, if you give him the mask... To Gormedrius, if someone dies, then I can reanimate you, so it's not a big deal. I mean, yeah. you're, I'm in control of you now, but that's fine. So... <laughs> uh, so he's going to try to hang on to the mask, but we can we can do a roll for it. Alright, I won't... Uh, I, I don't want to like try to nab it from you, but it, I'll be like... Give it, give it, give it. <laughs> Point at my nose. <laughs> Um, all right, so Gormedrios. Uh, Gormedrios, like, points the skull of Hydrex at, um, uh, D free with the, the, his other hand, and he has it kind of shake its head now. Um, but Gormedrios does hand over. The, he takes like a, a big breath and then hands it over to the monkey. All right. Uh, so you'll have breath for the next round. Uh, and then, uh, and everybody's past the first round. The monkey grabs the mask back and starts like frantically trying to uh, get it back, control the levers, and then slowly gets the levers back in, in such a way that the, the elevator just starts to um, ascend slowly. Very slowly, and then the monkey's calm again. Um, meanwhile, what's everybody else doing? Everybody can make another um, uh, hold breath check. Oops. Nope. All right. I hit that luck. Check the luck. I uh, I rolled better than last time, with an eleven. So, did did you guys do um, getting did, closer? Did you guys also just do a standard test as well? Because you can. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, and so you had to use your. Yeah, luck. I rolled an eight. So okay, yeah. Two yep. fours. All right, I think you were able to like pull yourself up um, to the top of this thing and try to find like bubbles of air, but you're like up against the. The, the, the top of the, uh, the the elevator thing and the uh, obese gas or uh, uh, 
liquid monster is like, I'm really sorry. And he feels really bad about it. Could you crouch? <laughs> That's just, like, if I'm, I'm using, like, my staff to kind of hang myself from the ceiling. Like, a little, like, hook. Like, to pull myself up. And I'm like... Yeah? Are you trying to, like, um... Uh, I'm trying to get air. Oh, trying to get air. Okay, yeah. yeah. But then I'm also patting him like I understand. Like, Consoling him? Okay. And you I asked him to crouch? Is that Yeah. Okay. Mungan, okay, so everybody burned another luck point, but passed their luck checks. Um, okay, let me see here. Um, he's like, oh... That's that's a good idea. I could try that. Um, and he uh, he like like the whole thing starts to shudder and vibrate and kind of list. And uh, as it's slowly going up and playing that elevator music, and uh, the edges of the uh, the room kind of like get air back into it as this thing starts to try to condense itself. He's like, oh, I'm trying to suck it in. And, um, yeah, so you passed another round. Um, and, uh, you need to pass one more round and not die of suffocation. Not using those deep he looks like, it looks like he's like sucking it in pretty good. <gasps> yes. Four. Four. Okay, nice. I'm still hanging by my staff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I rolled. I, I rolled. Uh, if if I match it, is it a is it a success? Stamina is a seven. I rolled yeah, a seven. equal equal or under. Yeah, that's perfect. I think that's what it says. Uh, da, 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 rules. Sorry, did you say roll another breath check? Equal to or under. Yeah, and then also, um, uh, Gormedrios, of course, this time without the gas mask. And we're trying success. to get under nice. our. Under our skill. Yeah. I bet you it passed. Nice. Okay, so you were able to find a pocket of air. Under our skill? Yeah. And then you do a luck check if you fail. That's okay. The book doesn't say that. It says I determine when to do oh, a luck I check. I did it out of order. Ah, that's uh, right. We'll take it anyway. Hey. Nice. Okay, so everybody's Didn't able to find pockets of it. air. And then, uh, thankfully, it finally... Like, uh, you know, this, like, music is playing, but it's kind of garbled in this liquid. And you've got the little monkey in the gas mask. And finally, the elevator doors open. And um, this thing just spills out uh, onto the next floor. And it's like, sorry about that, guys. And um, uh, the monkey um, points to a sign takes the gas mask off, puts it back in the compartment, points to a sign, and uh, goes like this, and then hops off of the little stool it's on, and then walks off down the corridor, and the elevator door stays open. And there's a Look little it, sign goes. with, like, little tiny writing on it. And, uh... And, in addition, there is a little shop here like a little 7-eleven thing or like one of those things you'd find like in a subway or something a vendor and um uh yeah there's a little shop with like snacks and toiletries and stuff and the monkey goes up and jumps up onto a stool in the little 7-eleven yeah, in front of the 7-Eleven and hops up onto a little stool next to it and sits there. And then this, like, uh, shopkeeper from that thing, like, leans out. And it's like a, a humanoid except with an egg for a head and a, and a big smile on, a, on the egg. Oh. And, and, it <laughs> and it has this smelly, rotten fruit and it hands it to the little monkey. And the monkey takes it and starts munching it down. You have any respirators? Well, 
Hello there. I don't have any respirators, but I got some fine things if you'd like. I've got uh, some of these lorettes. And uh, they're like the ones the old lady had, like the little spectacles with, that you hold on to look at. And then, and I've got all these stuffed owls. And he's got like a whole wall of stuffed owls. And they're like figurines, like they're owls in different like uh, poses with their wings and stuff. And they can be manipulated. And, um, and I've got all these gods, got tons of gods. And, and it's a wall of like little, uh, little, uh, I don't know what to call them. Uh, little, uh, figurine things used for religious purposes. There's a word for that. Um, and there's tons of them. Statuaries. Yeah. But they're like little tiny figurines of like random religious things. And, and he's like, I just got this in today, a whole shipment of it. And there's this big canister of uh, some kind of sticky, greasy substance. Well, and how much are you asking for the owls? Hmm, for you, six pence. Mm, I'm afraid that's a bit beyond me at the time. What's the, what's the goopy it? stuff? The goopy stuff? This right here, my fine friend, is per, is is a prime grade A goose grease. And then the monkey starts to like like he's gonna get back to work, but then he hands him more more candy. And then the monkey like and starts eating. And how much are the little glasses? Hmm. Well. I could go as low as 32. How much for the, the goose grease? Hmm. <clears throat> I could do 15 for that. 15? Can I get a half portion? Oh, you're killing me. A half Not of yet. it? Well, it's hard to find goose grease like this. But people wouldn't buy half of it. They'd want all of it. They'd say, they'd say, where's the other half of the goose grease? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't know that you'd sold half of it. They'd think they were getting all of it. You can, you can make any kind of skill check that would relate to persuading this, this uh, egg oh. person. Gosh. <laughs> and the monkey's like, he's, the monkey's going to get back to work, but instead the, the merchant hands it more candy and the monkey just keeps eating. Uh, <laughs> does it have to be a skill that I have? Yes. Okay, I figured. Uh, or you can roll a skill check with just your skill stat. Okay. So would that be 2d6 plus my skill? Uh, 2d6 and you want to roll under your skill number. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I don't think any of the skills that I have are going to particularly come in handy. Unless I did pistol at fighting and used a little intimidation, but I don't think I'll do that. All right. Nope. Nope. I'm afraid, sir, I need to keep all this goose grease together. It's hard to find this stuff. No, you're right. I hear you. I'll, uh, I'll take one of those owls for five, though. Uh, he's just about to feed, uh, like, another candy to the monkey. And he holds the candy back and he's like, ah, really? Which owl would you like, sir? And there's well, just, what do you have? They're just all like, you know, different colors. There's like white owls and brown owls and everything. And they're like, you know, in different poses, just like. So, but you can like move them around. You can move them poses. around. Yeah. And oh, they have manipulatable cool. uh, wings and head and feet. Gotcha. 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 Uh, I'll have uh, the green one. Here's one green owl. You won't be disappointed, I tell you what. And this Eggman hands you the green owl. And then he okay. winks at the monkey. And then the monkey hops off the stool. Looking at the owl more closely, is it anything beyond just a figurine of an owl? No, it's like an actual owl. Like an owl. You've got an owl. And it's taxidermied, okay. except, uh, except its wings and stuff are completely manipulatable like a like a like a toy or like a doll. I could attempt to bring that back to life for you. 
No, because if you do that, then it belongs to you, doesn't it? <laughs> you think it doesn't it have to? It doesn't have to. I, I, I'm not super versed in the ways of magic, but from the little bit of necromancy I do know, I, I don't think you're gonna be able to give it to me. Well. I could either bring it back for you, or it may explode. Is that a threat? No, it just happens sometimes. Hmm. I don't think you're as clever as you think. I would not recommend explode Manu Owl. It only happens if I try to bring it back to life. The, uh... Oh, you're... Yeah, the, the elevator door is about to close. But like with the monkey, but then yeah, you hold the um, uh, uh, Differy holds the elevator, but then the monkey like looks exasperated and points to the little tiny sign with the little tiny writing again. What's the sign say? You're not there. You're com you're you're arguing with uh, with Gormedrios about the owl. Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah. I would have gone on ahead towards the elevator. Okay. I really wanted the little glasses, but they were too expensive. So. Yeah, those are expensive glasses. So I wanted to see what the little small print was. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You're, so. If someone looks really closely, um, that you see that it says it's, it's basically union work rules for the monkey. Um, and, uh, and, it, and it says he has to have a certain number of breaks every day. Uh, patrons can't can't be mean to him. Um, he has to keep the elevator on time and all this kind of stuff. And I guess seeing that, I would uh, look at the at the monkey and would be like, "You're doing a great job. I appreciate you." Um, he he, uh, he nods like because he's like he's self assured and he's like, "Yeah, I know. I do it." <laughs> I gotta clear my throat. <clears throat> Going up. Hopefully. Does everybody get back on the elevator? Yeah, I noticed that D Free and Enfa are gone and and so I say to um Gromedrius I say, uh we'll talk about this later. I think we're about to get left behind and book it for the elevator. Silently glides behind. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, you all get back in the elevator, and the door um, it op you know closes again behind you all. And slow, he he moves some of the levers and looks on solemnly, knowing that he's appreciated finally for his hard work. And the elevator very slowly raises uh, until it gets to the next floor, and then uh, the door opens, and uh, there is a really scrawny woman in thick in a thick leather apron and she's like surrounded by tigers uh on leashes and she's like no 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 george come here boy come here boy and like trying to wrestle and like try to train all the tigers and she's like um and she's like okay just three just three this time and she lets loose the tigers and they get in the elevator um these giant tigers and they take up all the space in the elevator that's left and then the door closes and the monkey just keeps operating and the elevator starts going up and um uh and there's these huge tigers in the elevator with you but they seem to they seem to ignore you like i was like the outdoor you're gonna try to oh you want to as she reaches out d free just kind of goes like Back to, to her hand, like... No, yeah, no. just like, mm, just really gently. You, but just you, like, you do oh, that, okay. and then you just hear... Ugh. And then all of a In sudden... The character would never touch like, a living creature. Out of character, I definitely want to touch the tigers. <laughs> and then you hear, gra you hear like a growling, and you see the monkey like not attending to his duties and has the tiger's tail, and is like pulling on it, and like looks like, like, like he wants to eat it. Get kind of reach it. up. And I push the monkey back, just like... 
he he he's like affronted, and then he like starts to point to his sign, and then he looks at it, and he's like, and then he goes back to like operating the levers again. <laughs> That'll be at the next union meeting. <laughs> Get that clause added, in the contract. Like added on there must allow time <laughs> for animal petting. <laughs> And um, it slowly goes up, um, and um, you realize that 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 was not an actual hotel floor that had the merchant. Um, there was something else going on there, because uh, this opens and and like the one before it, there's a there's a hallway here, and um, there's another guy who's like trying to wrestle a bunch of tigers down this hotel hallway, and uh, the tigers like run off with him, and he's trying to get them all together. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, and the elevator closes again. And, it would uh, be a great, oh, sorry. oh, go ahead. It'd be a great lie if I were to say I did not want to pet those tigers. And then you hear like clinking. And it's down like below you. You just hear clinking. Slowly look down. Where you slowly look down, and then looking up at you is like <laughs> this little dude in like a suit of armor that has multi different colors for each, like the pauldron and the chest and everything is different colors. And he looks up and he's like, chuk, chuk, chuk. You, you, it's just plate mail. You don't see what's in the in the suit of armor, but he's like nodding, like he would have pet the tigers too. But he's been standing there. <laughs> He's about three feet tall. I myself are a worker of metal, and I very much appreciate that armor. <laughs> he he does a little jig in it too to show his incredible mobility that he has in it. For to be full plate armor, uh, it's not very loud while he while he dances. Ifri is thoroughly impressed with this craftsmanship. Is he like hanging off the bottom of the uh, elevator car, or what? No, he's a uh, he's inside of the elevator car. Uh, it turns out he's been there for a while now. Our guy got the worst of the tigers. Um, let's see here. And then something happens. And all of a sudden, uh, the, uh, the elevator starts to shake. And then, uh, the little monkey's like, and like shakes his head and holds his head in his hands. And it starts to go down. And he's like, the opposite. he's like, oh. And he's trying to operate it, and he's like, oh, and the elevator seems like it's not working right. Tiny creature, the Hydrax the Master has been invited to the soiree. Fix this at once. Oh, you mean you're talking the monkey, not the little guy in the suit of armor. The monkey, yeah. Ah, okay. He, um... He gets really upset when you say that, and he's like, hmm, and he points back to the sign again, and he's like, hmm, and he just lets it go, and like it starts going down. Imagine with union regulations that he's not allowed to do that job. <laughs> I love that you guys understand you like labor stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, he gets really mad at that. Um, but you could make uh, any kind of like skill check or magic if you wanted to try to persuade him to try to fix it outside of his uh, his scope claws. <laughs> I guess I'll try. Okay, what are you going to do? I guess a persuasion. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I'm really oh. appreciative of all that you do. And... Uh... 
I really would like to get up to our floor because it's been a long day. Um, is there anything you can do to fix it? And then 2d6. Yeah. And under, under my your skill. skill. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> what happened? I rolled two fives. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, no, he's like this now. He's just really mad and he's like... And then, like, eventually it stops, but it stops at a service floor. And it just opens, and there's, like, no hotel floor here, and he just walks off. And so now you have this elevator, and the lights are flickering, and you've got the little dude in the suit of armor, and just this hotel floor. It's like the service, it's like a service floor. I think perhaps me way be taking the stairs. What do you all do? I agree. I think the stairs are the way to go. Um, let me see here. Does this uh, little simian just run off into the darkness? The, yeah. the monkey does. He just saunters off. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. I got to roll... Two, one, two, six. Okay, okay, I can do this. And then one of this. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, so. Aha! Yes. Uh, there are uh four porters that are rolling barrels of alcohol uh, in an, into a room nearby, and they seem kind of upset. And this uh, the service uh, um, hallway, it loops around, and it's not as ornate as like the actual hotel, uh, but it does go to a, ser- a set of stairs at the end. walk up to the uh up to the stairs <clears throat> kind of lean in does it have that uh um like you know like an apartment or something it's got that space in between you can see up and you can see down it's just that <clears throat> opening. oh the, the yeah, gap the, the gap yeah 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 it has a gap okay i kind of look down and then i look up kind of expecting the shaft actually bends like uh, in like uh, it doesn't go straight and it, it stops. You look down, it doesn't go straight. It like goes straight and starts to bend and then you see the curve. Look down, look up. Oh, of course it does. <laughs> you want to try to like get the the thing open and ascend the shaft. Is that the, is that what you're thinking? Oh, okay. Um, no, no. I mean, what, what are you, what are you wanting to do? Okay. I was just checking up the, uh, the steps there, but, uh, I guess oh, you're looking up the else. steps. Yeah. The, um, uh, when you, when you walk into, uh, uh, are like you the, talking the, about the stairways and there's that, that, that gap in the middle of the stairways. You're talking about the stairwell. Where, where yeah, you can look down. Well. I thought you were talking about the yeah. elevator. I thought you were looking for oh, okay. the elevator. So you are you go down to the hall and you're looking to see what is like down the stairwell and that gap that goes down? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I can describe that. Um, you go down the hall and there, these uh, four people are fussing in a room nearby and uh, and then you open a, a door and, you, and it's this... Um, actually, let me describe... Um, the stairs here are actually immaculate, uh, more like a grand staircase. And, uh, the landing at where this is at is white and red marble. Um, and, uh, the landing is quite large actually. And there are these, uh, aluminum metal stairs that just spiral up to the next landing. Um, and there is a relief on the wall here that's carved. And there's a little writing 
uh, with a little plaque down below the relief. And the relief shows... Uh, two beak-faced beak -faced figures in robes with pointed hats. And they have serrated keys and they're exchanging them and shaking hands. And behind each of them is a horde of braying demons in this relief. And the little sign says, The Exchange of Mothos. A horde of brain demons? B-R-A-I-N? Braying. Like, ah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And <clears throat> if you look down the stairwell, you can see a ways down the spiral on the next landing down. There is a woman trying to fight off a bunch of owls that are trying to that are that are bothering her with a with a mop. That's what you see down below. Do they look like my owl? Yeah, you know, like different colored owls. She should have bought an owl. Yeah. Hmm. If I go hold my owl up to the picture, does it do anything? No. Worth a shot. What do you do? I guess we should go up. Yeah, we're still trying to get up to our room. On the sixth floor. Okay. Um... You start to um, to make your way up, um, and then uh, you find that uh, the the stairs here are suddenly uh, there's there's a a, um, a breach in the wall, and there's all this water that's pouring out onto the stairs, and the landings of the individual stairs are just water. Um, and there's a there's a, a cord that says, "Please forgive us for any inconvenience caused." You see a sponge floating in one of the pools on one of the stairs, but there's not any staff here. Whose idea was it to choose this venue? <laughs> I think it was the fellow with the skull. He seemed they handed him the key when we walked in. Hey, look over. Was this your idea? No, it was just Hydrex the master. He holds up the skull. It was your skull's idea. I you listen to his ideas skull, often. Basically. Yes, his wisdom always. Fascinating. But technically, he received an invitation to this place. I have simply brought him here. And I have to ask a question uh, of our necromancer friend here. I'll do. I'll send you a whisper. A whisper. <clears throat> Uh, no. Okay. Alright, what do you guys do? Is the water blocking our way, or is it just coming out of the floor? It's coming out of the wall. There's a breach in the wall. It looks like they tried to patch it with, like, duct tape, but it's still just, like, spraying out a little bit. And it's pooled on several of the stairs. Um, going up. Hmm. What about these fellers carrying the alcohol? Are they just trudged through it, or what are they doing? They looked like they were um, uh, carrying large containers of alcohol down the hall and complaining about something, and then went into a side room with the barrels of alcohol. Maybe they know a detour.
Let's Where's the shot? Can we go to that side room that they went in? See um, if they're around. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you go back, then you hear clanking as the little as the little suited guy like follows you around with you and goes back to the to the room and um, and you see four people in there they're humans humanoids uh, in strange dress and they're um, they have these large containers and they're like who even picked this venue this is a terrible place to have the the feast of the of the of the chili arc right <laughs> oh who are you you're not supposed to be in here What are you doing here? All the well, guests, the guests are supposed to be headed on to the feasts. Well, we've been trying to get to our room and we can't seem to make it up to the sixth floor. You've built a real maze of horrors here. Uh, and then one of them's like, see, Todd, now there's several of the, the guests that are down here. They're stuck too. Do you have any ideas of how we can get up to our floor? Well, how did you get here, Miss? Did you? Uh, I mean, what? Why did you? Why did you end up here? You sh- we were on the elevator, and then someone, the pointing fingers, uh, someone offended the individual in there, and uh, he protested and left. All these damn union workers. See, that's why they hire us contractors to come in, because we get the things done. <laughs> this place is a, its ridiculous. The city's going under, I tell you. Speaking of, have any of you died recently? They looked at each. They look at each other, and uh, and 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 one of them's like, "That was like five years ago." And Do you still like, have the body somewhere? He's like, in a manner of speaking. In a manner of speaking. What well, do look, you mean? So it sounds like the the those darn monkeys that run this place. They just left. The union work. The, the, Sounds like the elevator's broke again, huh? Well, we can't even use the service elevator, and the and and then they told us to go up the stairs. Can you believe that? They want us to carry this up the stairs, the sixth floor. You should kill you them and reanimate their body to do your bidding. Well, we talked about that. <laughs> we don't think it would be covered. It's not in our contract. Contractors. There's some sort of uh, insurance <laughs> policy that you guys have with that. It's a very irritating negotiation. Out of character, okay. Joel is saying you've clearly never worked with contractors. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not in the contract. So, we're pretty well just as stuck as you are. As I tell you what, we're not going to pull these things up the... Uh, why? The, the hot tubs, they're busted on the next floor. Force Would there be flooded. any benefit to helping them lift, it, lift them up to the party? Lift, lift what up? To help them out with their work. I mean, they seem in need of a hand. What could we possibly gain by helping them? I don't know. What do y'all think? We could have it. Be a good idea. Like, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if having their gratitude would be beneficial or at all, or being owed a favor, possibly, but I mean, it can't hurt. So you're going to go up there anyways. Hmm. Yeah, so Mungan turns around and offers to help. If you get these three barrels of alcohol up to the feast,
we'll give you all of our bonus for on time to delivery and we'll give you all of our incidentals and our per diem and then the the one guy's like Gerald not the per diem that's how I make a lot of well, but hold on now is this a is this a time and materials contract or is this a fixed quote are you getting paid the same regardless or are we doing labor and saving you time you would be helping us what's your per diem each of us makes six pence a day what's your bonus they look at each other and they, they're like, it's 50 pence. For all of us. It's a, all right. Even the dead guys. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not dead. Gerald's like, not yet. <laughs> Have you already surpassed the time allotment for the bonus? Not yet. But we'd pretty much expe accepted it. All right, well, we'll help you out. Uh, we get your bonus. We get your incidentals and your per diem. And then we want 15% of the rest. Gormedrius just shakes Hydrax's head, no. <laughs> Hydrax the Master does not take part in this bargain. Well, fine. Bigger portion for the rest of us. Well, in order to do that, you'll have to work for our company. How about we set up a a one-hour temporary contract? They get all kinds of papers out, and then like they start like reviewing everything. This takes a long time. <laughs> you're, making me, your... you're making me do my actual job <laughs> <laughs> during my role playing they, game. They, they, they agree to it though. Okay, I did 50 hours of contract work. We're fine. All right, so we we peruse it. Or they can we spot any uh, traps or? So I'm gonna say so, that no, it's fine. Uh, they're just barrel. They're huge containers. Uh, these are porters. Huge gotcha. things of, of alcohol. Um, the problem is that you're... Um, let's see. So you have three barrels of alcohol. As long as you carry them and you don't have any other way to transport them, you will uh, not be able to take any significant treasure. You won't be able to pick up any other larger items or carry them. And you might have disadvantage if you're trying to like jump across something or something like that. So now you've got three big barrels of alcohol and you've just signed your name to some contracts, except for Gamedrius. But the little guy in the suit, he agrees to the contract. So he helps carry one barrel. Okay. I mean, it's a worst case scenario. Like we, if we don't complete the job, we don't get paid. So if we're carrying these barrels of alcohol and we do come across treasure that's worth significantly more than what we are going to make, we can just drop the barrels of alcohol. Well, the, the worst case scenario is now that you've signed the contract, uh, they will uh, pursue litigation in, in, in Troika's uh, Byzantine court structure. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, off we go. All right, so you got the stairs that are have water, pools of water on each stair. You've got the broken elevator, and then you've got windows to the outside. What do you want to do? Um, fellow with the skull, you don't perhaps have any uh, fancy spells that could help lift these barrels outside the outside of the building, do you? I have a spell that lets me pretend to be dead. So no. Uh, other ideas. I mean, carrying up, up the stairs, sure, but the elevator's 
probably not our best bet. I uh, yell to the contractors. Oi, the slicker, is it carbonated? Yes. Oh, we can float. We certainly could. Float it up the stairs, though. It seems to be defying gravity anyway. Look, right. you're perfectly, perfectly dry. <laughs> Fuck it. And Let's then... put it on the water and float it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you like set up like some kind of like system where you like start floating on one and try to like tie it to the next one and then like bring the next one up and like keep doing that or something? Yeah. Yeah, you're probably not gonna get the time bonus. Ooh. That's okay. Time bonus is the most Lucrative. valuable part of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, but you do manage to uh, to do that. It takes a horrible long time and you're exhausted. Um, and then you get up to the next landing and it's the same thing. The landing is, uh, marble and beautiful. And there's a, another relief up here. You see here a, um, uh, on the wall, a smooth orb relief that is, uh, falling from the sky. And there are people running and screaming, running away from it. And that's what's on the wall. And then, um, uh, you get up to the, uh, the, the, the landing. And then as the stairs go up here, there's this huge slimy thing wedged in the stairs. And every once in a while it goes, and it like slides and there's slime, like just falling off of the thing. And, uh, there are these like mattress sized, uh, there are three mattress sized things with tabards um, and they um, they're trying to push this slimy thing up the stairs so it looks like they're just trying to push it up the stairs or are they trying does it look like they're trying to just get rid of it in general or it looks like they're trying to push it up the stairs you hear one of them say yes we're so sorry your majesty yes we won't do this again we promise we're so sorry for picking this venue you're so right your majesty never mind Oh, you were going to, like, disappear it or something. <laughs> you were going to do some magic there. Wait, what were we okay. saying, Steve? Uh -oh. I was oh, going to cast a firebolt on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but nope, never mind if it's <laughs> your majesty. What were we saying, uh, Is this the fellow who's throwing the banquet? <clears throat> uh, Probably. Chili Ark himself. Uh, you could ask one of them if you wanted. One of the and and as you get closer, these like large uh, cre creatures, uh, they're they are slimy as well, and they have tabards, and the tabards are just moist. You just feel like moisture as you get close to these things, and they are also like slugs. But they're like upright slugs with little slug arms. And they're trying to push this giant slimy thing up the stairs. And they're calling it Your Majesty. Use me, gentlemen. You say he chose the venue. And saying His Majesty, is this the great chili arc? And then like one of them turns and they're like... <gasps> Oh no! Oh, we're so sorry. You, I know you weren't supposed to be seen. Oh, oh dear. Oh, you must <laughs> promise not to, not to reveal that his magnificence, his moistness, King Juniper Jupiter Lex Halfwell the Fourth, took the stairs. You must promise. Oh, of course, I certainly saw nothing this day. Oh. Thank, thank the chili arc. Do 
So that's not the chili arc. No. Okay. <laughs> You suppose anybody is going to be on time? Hmm. Yes. Uh, probably everyone's already at the party, already waiting for his grand moistness to provide the, 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 uh, uh, the speech, the festivities. Oh, he's been stuck here for some time. Lean into the others. I bet Goose Grease. Goose Grease would have worked. We should Goose Grease, but it's so grease. hard to come by. <laughs> Rats. No magic, no ideas. Oh. The only thing I can think of is I have a spell uh, Assume Shape. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> is it just for you to assume a shape? Um, let me check. Okay, so it says... The wizard undergoes a distressing transformation into an inanimate object no larger than a piano and no smaller than a cup. So a battering ram. Or, uh, I don't know, what else could it be that would move in a slimy object that's stuck in a, a stairwell? A ramp? A ramp? <laughs> What a horrible world this is. <laughs> <laughs> and you've played in, in Damrung in this one. You're like, yeah. this is worse. There are this unions here. <laughs> 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 this is worse than my grim, dark horror setting. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what fresh hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to remind... It's funny that this seems to remind everybody of their real life. <laughs> it's like, is this a metaphor for my work today? What I did at work? <laughs> well, that's been my last three days is, oh, we got a delay. Oh, we got a delay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to suck up to something slimy and push it up where it needs to go. Oh, mine's been trying to find room in a budget to pay contractors for work they refuse to do. Well, there you go. <laughs> Wish fulfillment. <laughs> it's just gonna paint. So, so you have so you could try to transform into an object, uh, and then you have three big barrels of alcohol. Um, the uh, the little guy in the in the in the plate armor suit. He's also he's like clanking his like little hand against his. His plate face, like, chink, 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 like, thanking as well, you know. Oh, suppose you changed into a plunger. A giant plunger. Giant plunger. I am <laughs> extremely uncomfortable with the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess never the, us. the first thing is you have to make a spell check anyway. Do you want to just make the spell check? I don't know. Would I get like turned into some random shape if I fail? If you if you fumble, you can you have to roll on the oops table, which I've been yeah. wanting to see anyway. So it's I mean I don't know. Okay, so I roll under. I, I will even make a deal with you. I will say you can. Okay, I will also say you can. Um, burn your luck because I, I would have wanted to do this anyway I'm sorry I didn't do it before but I'll say you can borrow from your luck now the downside is if you use your luck to try to pass this check you lose that luck and then if you have to make a luck check you won't have it but but you can burn luck to succeed 
You have to get it below six, essentially. Is that that's your skill? Yeah. So you can use luck and burn luck and put it on top of your six if you want. Like add seven to the six? Yeah, you could you could add maybe one like so if you rolled uh if you rolled an eight, you could add two, but then your seven goes down to a five. Okay. For luck, yeah. Okay. It's from Dungeon Crawl Classics. I'll take uh, if I meet the skill, do I pass? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take one luck so that it's seven skill. All I right. rolled a seven. So do you do you turn into a giant plunger? No, I was thinking of a ram. Yeah, like a okay. Well, oh, so you like go underneath and turn it into a ramp, so then it just like he can just slide up. Yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah, you just like fill in the spaces among the stairs. He's no longer in the stairs, and you just have like a, a ramp. And, and they go, oh, this is how they were supposed to build this according to the building codes of Troika anyways. Thank you so much. And like this giant slug monarch is able to squeeze its way up to the to the next floor, and they make the decision to uh, to leave and to, to make their way down the hallway, and he leaves this slimy trail behind him. And you make it up to the next floor, and uh, you see here um, a relief of a rather average-looking man who, with a resigned, maybe even content look on his face, who is in a massive collection of, of unfortunate deaths, accidents, and malice. Uh... He's just being beat up or killed, and and bad things are happening to him, and and that's what you see on the wall here. And um, and on this floor, all of a sudden, um, you see um, that uh, the stairs ahead of you are straight, and. Um, It looks like the the stairs suddenly ahead of you, like it's like they're like five or six feet tall. Like you'd have to jump up and try to climb up to the next stair. And when you look back behind you now, the stairs you just came from, where you're assume I assume you're no longer a ramp, since it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um. Undo undoes it and like she's somewhat covered in slime and oh, she no. just looks awful. Like. Oh no. <laughs> That's a doozy. Second time this week. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you look back the stairs where you came from, and the stairs are t- really minuscule and tiny, almost like contracting into an infinity behind you. And you look up, and the stairs up above you are huge. All right. <laughs> Climb up <laughs> one of the steps. Try to hoist the uh, get, get somebody to pass me the, uh, the, the the liquor. Put that on. Yeah. Try to do an ant line all the way up. Yeah. You do that a couple of stairs up, and then you get up and you look down and you see the door uh, across from you into the uh, the roof where the sixth floor is, and you see the you see the door there. But then down in front of you is like this massive chasm that opens into the maw of some kind of beast, like hundreds of feet either way and, and down into like a fleshy maw with teeth on either side and uh, a, a, a nasty uh, breath and heat coming up from the maw of this, uh, this beast. Right, I, I uh, walk towards the party, muttering something about a non-Euclidean hell. Um, yeah, and, and then, I say, <laughs> okay. And 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 then you also see um, 
uh, the sky here. Like so, instead of a ceiling, so you have a door uh, that you can clearly see that on on the other side here. There's a landing with a door uh, across this this gap where this maw is. But up above you, instead of a ceiling, now is like a sky, a really um, uh, um, a sky that gives the impression that this is a beast within a beast, like that you're already within some kind of stomach. And um, and on the other side where that landing is and the door is, is a beautiful little glade with grass and trees. And there's a woman there who's using a book as a pillow. Oh, excuse me. Um, with the, the the hot breath of this beast all around you, uh, it's hard for, for your voice to be heard across the chasm. As it is, anyways. All right. I, I try to just yell it really loud. Yeah. Excuse me. Without magic or artifice of some kind, it's hard to... You hear almost this kind of like rumbling, like... Like all around you, um, and this this hot breath coming up out of this chasm. But she does not awake. Does anybody have something we could throw at her? Unfortunately, nothing that uh, potentially hurt her. Would uh, the fellow with the skull, do you want perhaps to uh, make my uh, owl fly? Sure, we could uh, try to bring it back for you. It's worth a shot. It hasn't helped me so far. What color is your owl? I can't remember. Green. And you can okay. burn luck if you want. Like you can add luck away from your luck score to your to your die result if you per, dice result. All right. Uh, it's going to cost me five stamina, so I'm down to eleven. And then. Uh, Let's see, 2d6 plus the skill total, and then check. So, it's plus five, plus six, 15, so 13 plus counts for success as far as the tick mark. Yay. Um, 15 plus. The creature is animated and will last for 24 hours before literally falling to pieces. Um, Who has... Con do you, you have control of him, I assume? It doesn't really specifically... Um, Say, but yeah, that kind of makes sense. So imagine Gormedrios would take the owl. You know, Hood stays up the whole time. He still actually has the skull in the other hand. He's got the owl in his free hand. He uh, kind of quietly consults with the skull a few times. He mutters back and forth with it. Um, and will, like kind of do incantations over the owl with the skull still in his hand. Um, and then momentarily, uh, this owl just kind of like, almost like it woke up and it startled itself. Um, it does miraculously come back to life. Um, and it's like roosting on Gormedrios' hand. The hood looks over. What did you want? 
your L to do? I'm going to fly over and see if we can wake up that woman. Ormedrius just walks a few steps over to you and offers the owl over. To uh, you do that to Mungan? Yeah. Okay. Mungan, what do you do? Oh, um, I'm going to send the owl across the void to... Uh, the chasm to try to wake the woman. Uh, it looks at you with a terrified expression, um, but uh, it feels like its its wings are a little bit off. Um, and then, like, it looks at you like uh, with a pleading look, but then, like, flies off across the chasm, across this maw with the hot breath, like rising up into the air onto that glade, and then lands next to the woman. And then gently pecks the woman a little bit. And then she wakes up and she's like, oh dear. And then like all of a sudden like the maw is gone and the sky is gone. And uh, it's just a, uh, it's just a stairwell. And um, she wakes up and she's like, oh, oh. And she looks, and she's like, well, hello, little friend. And she looks down the, a few of the stairs. You're only like a few stairs away from her now. And, and she looks in and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I... I must have fallen asleep on accident and not taken the proper precautions. And then she puts like a bunch of pages back into her spell book that she fell asleep on. It was absolutely terrifying. Oh <clears throat> yes, I have some odd dreams. Well, I, I do apologize. And she puts like uh, the, the pages, but she leaves some pages out. You can actually see that she's left some pages um, and misses them starts to get her belongings and starts to head down the stairs. Hello. I'm try to steal the pages with sneak. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, okay. you can make a, a... Well, you don't have to make a check. She's just forgotten them, so you can just pick them up. Well, I have it as an advanced skill. You could do it if you want. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do I just do under, I reckon? Yeah. Or my version? <laughs> well, and uh, it's your skill, and then you add that advanced skill to the to the target number, and you have to roll under that. And you do. Okay. Yeah, you have um, you have some new spells. You have, uh, uh, do I need to like take time to check them out? Uh, I would just say if it comes up, we could use it. But um, I'll just I'll record how many pages. You got three pages, and okay. you have the spell Exchange Shape, Peace, and Slide Skywards. That was... I'm sorry, one more time. Exchange Shape, okay. pe Peace, Like, and, hell yeah, man, Peace? Yeah, like Peace, you know. Okay. And then Slide Skywards. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the door... Is right there, and it's just a stairwell, and it goes into the, uh, it goes into the roof where the party, and you can already hear the music from the party. What's the owl doing? Does it fly back and land on Mungan? I think it probably flies back and lands on Mungan, and then it looks like pleading to Mungan, and then like realizes that like it's moving its its wing weirdly, and then its wing like stops moving right, and then it takes on an odd pose uh, pose. And then it looks like back at Mungan, like, what is my purpose? And then stops looks moving. Looks over at uh, Mungan, and from within, Gormidrio says, Thou will perish once again, this time, tomorrow. I think it, uh, yeah, I think it just goes ahead and <laughs> it does it. Because it's just like, now. yeah, like, and then, then, like, you know, was that all I was for, you know? I don't know. We'll see. Just get, we'll see. But, um, yeah. You get your owl back anyways. <laughs> nice. That's um, all I wanted. Right? You don't care it about it. It has one more day of life before it will perish once more. With the uh, the pages, I kind of Im uh, image me and Mungan bending down to go, Oh, actually, you missed the... And then they're just kind of gone and go, Oh, okay. <laughs> um, there's a rhythmic thumping coming from the roof as the festival is in full swing. Uh, there are party goers hanging about chatting, engaging in various festive activities. 
Um, and you can see um, a hallway um, open to the elements, uh, but then leading off into various rooms. And you see in the strange shape of your key that it's not a keyhole, but that you would actually literally put the key into the key face, like the long length of the key. And it obviously fits your key. And uh, there is your room. Uh, but here on the roof... Um, I'm sorry, no. Um, uh, in the hallway that's open to the elements, there are a bunch of people playing uh, dice on an antique rug, and they are also drawing something on on the on the hallway wall. And um, um, I will go ahead and say, uh, in the uh, in your room, you see a single giant round bed um, instead of instead of a suite with various beds. And then immediately in, in, in this giant round bed, there's like a, a, a basket of uh, complimentary colorful boiled eggs. <laughs> Is there a shower or a bath or some sort yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, you have to like, like it's a circular room and you have to go like onto the outside of the circle of the room to a door to go into the bathroom and the shower. And then there's just this giant circular bed in the middle of the room with, with the eggs in the middle. And then the party's going on outside. And you've made it to the party, into your room. I would say Ampho would immediately go to try to find the bathroom because she's still covered in slime. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. d kind of walks into the party, puts down the barrel, slaps it, and goes, We brought liquor! <laughs> Everyone <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Yay! You know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I'd like to uh, spend a little salmon and try to cast a spell. Is that okay? Yeah. What are you What are you gonna cast? Uh, skeletal counsel. I'm gonna try that again. Okay. So it costs three. Um. Down to eight stamina down. And then uh, let's see. Okay. And I need to roll under my skill total to cast it. Okay. That's going to be tricky. Let's see. <laughs> so what he does is he, Gormedrius, looks at the skull and asks Master Hydrax. We have arrived at the festivities of the Chili Arc. What is it you wish to do? But he gets no response. Do you well, want to burn your luck so that you get a response? Uh, how does that work? Uh, I just made it up. I brought, ripped it from DCC, but like, uh, let's say you have five luck. Uh, if you have to have a, what is it that you have to? What's whatever your skill is. So if you had had to have a four then you could burn you know well you you would need more how much is your luck how much luck do you have and what's your eleven. target 11 you have 11 luck okay and what's your what's your skill five five okay so you could burn five of your 11 luck and go down to six now let it ride hydrax just doesn't find me worthy to speak to okay so now Gormedrius is literally just standing there. Uh, At this party was uh, like like a black shadow, like in dusty robes, um, kind of and literally smells of the grave like a dead body. It's just me it, IRL at parties. Yeah. This party going around, <laughs> and, and I'm uh, just standing there like awkwardly. Uh, in fact, Ross, you know I'm a weirdo, so actually. Here. He's got, he's fully, well, the skull's normal size. So, it's, you know, he's got a normal, just chilling. Yeah. And that's how the sun, that's how the sun rises over, uh, as, as he gazes silently without response, Gremedrius at, at, at his master. <laughs> 